Today's video is sponsored by BetterHelp, but we'll get into that here in a little bit. These are going to be the first scenes I've attempted to germinate since the passing of my mom and grandma. And if you guys have been on this channel long enough, you know my mom and grandma were pretty much the staple and the reason for why I garden today. So I've been putting this off because I know it's gonna be kind of emotional for me, but regardless, we're getting on with the world around us. And one of the ways I'm doing that is through BetterHelp. BetterHelp is an online therapy platform where you are able to receive therapy online, whether that's via the phone, video call, or even text message. They match you with a therapist that is very specific to your needs, so male or female, what religion you're a part of, or even if you're a part of the LGBTQ2 plus group. Whether you need therapy for loss, like what I have, or if you need help with self-motivation or just in general therapy, having someone to talk to, and it will set you up and put you in the right direction for 2024. These therapists will be able to help you with stress management, setting goals, journaling, you name it. Join over 4 million people who have used BetterHelp to start living a healthier, happier life. Click the link below in the description or visit betterhelp.com slash gardening in Canada. Clicking the link helps support this channel. It's also going to get you 10% off your first month of BetterHelp so you can connect with therapists and see if it helps. It is officially time to start those seeds that are at the 10 to 12 week mark. However, this video is specially dedicated to those seeds that need stratification. And that includes rosemary and lavender, but can also include things like passion fruit or strawberry seeds. I mean, the list is truly endless. And the way to tell if your plant needs this or your seeds need this or not is actually to read the back of the packaging where it may reference putting the plants in your fridge for a period of time, whether that's one week all the way up to five weeks in some cases. But there is a way to really maximize the results of this and ensure success. Now, I used to use stratification when I worked in a research greenhouse and we utilized it specifically on wheat because the soil temperature that is needed for germination is much lower than that of which would be in a container in a greenhouse, if that makes sense. So we commonly use this this way of germination to get the best success. I never thought to try the methods we used in the lab in my home. And the only reason for that is because I just didn't put two and two together. However, last year I did start utilizing the methods that I'm going to show you here today with pretty shocking results for germination. I had better luck this way than I've had any other way in the past. So step one is actually placing your seeds onto a paper towel. Now the important part about starting a paper towel is that we don't allow the paper towel to be soaking wet. When we have cold and damp spaces, we are potentially putting our seeds at risk of rotting. So we want our paper towel to be moist in the sense that it is moisturized, but we wouldn't be able to squeeze out a single drop. Now, because we're going on the lower moisture end of things, we wanna ensure we have a mister around and we may need to mist over time, particularly with lavender seeds, which I intend to keep in the fridge for five to six weeks, so almost two months. So start with low moisture and add moisture as needed. That is the better bet of the two. Secondly is we commonly see people put the seeds in the middle of paper towel and then wrap the piece of paper towel over top. Now, this doesn't always work. We have to think like mother nature. And when lavender or strawberry or rosemary drops its seeds, it doesn't get buried. The seeds don't get buried into the soil uh, itself. They actually lay on the soil surface. So to mimic that, we actually just want to place our seeds equally spaced apart so we have some airflow between them on the surface of the paper towel. Now, when we slip it into our plastic bag, we want to make sure that the seeds are facing upwards and again are not layered or disrupted by other surrounding packages we may be using. Now, of course, mark your bags as to when you put them in. And I actually like to put the date that they are supposed to be removed rather than the date that they were put on the paper towel because it's a good reminder when you're going in your fridge looking for expired food products, it's time to actually take those out and plant them. Now, if you notice that things germinate a little bit sooner and you're noticing root and plant activity, which you will with the last half I'm gonna give you, you may wanna actually remove these a little bit sooner and pot them up into just your classic potting soil. As Soon as we see true leaves, it's time to take action. Now, 
This last step is probably the most important and is the make it or break it for great results. And that actually is the addition of a light. Now the light I'm using is off of Amazon. It was like $20. It's nothing fancy. It's not a particularly refined grow light and I don't even think it's meant for as a grow light, but it does the trick. These plant seeds are sensitive to light. And while yes, the soil is dark, it is not completely pitch black when we look at how nature naturally distributes these seeds. To trigger the cycle of growth between the moisture, the temperature, we also need to include light. That's the magic three that makes germination so flawless. Now you can place these lights on a timer and the timer would be 12 hours on, 12 hours off, typically speaking, or you can just plug it in and forget it. They could be on 24 hours. That doesn't really make that much of a difference. Remember the key is that the seeds themselves are exposed to light, meaning we don't want bags on top of each other. We don't want paper towel piled on top of each other. We want the seeds directly exposed to light. So for me, that means putting it into a crisper because that's going to be the most untouched because I know my husband's not going to dig through things. You may need a very specific fridge setup that you place it in, or if you are living in a house with children and husbands that like to rifle through fridges, you may choose to actually just pop everything into a cooler, put the light into said cooler and place that out in the garage. As long as you're around that five degrees Celsius mark, you are just fine. You don't want to go so low that you're freezing and you don't want to go so high that we cause exponential leggy growth. So that five degrees Celsius is ideal. So if you can maintain that inside of just a cooler, then I would go for that because that may be the easiest in your household. So ultimately speaking, the process of stratification, particularly with the addition of light, is causing this seed shell to swell. And this swelling allows for moisture to penetrate in and ultimately for the process that needs to take place for germination to be initiated. Every plant has a soil temperature in which they germinate. That's why when you sometimes buy heat mats, you can get ones with thermometers on them and you can get soil thermometers for your planting, which I've shown videos on before, to determine when to plant outdoors, that sort of thing. And it's really important we understand our soil temps, or in this case, our paper towel temps, where we're trying to mimic soil, to ensure that we get the best level of germination. Now, of course, lavender and rosemary could very easily germinate outside of a fridge setup. However, what we tend to see is legier growth and poor germination. So if we want to maximize the germination rates, get the biggest bang for our buck, that is when we want to seriously consider the utilization of cold exposure or stratification. Stratification is different than vernalization. Vernalization is when you have a bulb or a plant root, so garlic for example, and you're exposing a bulb or some sort of root biomass to cold. They're essentially the same thing. The difference is seed versus established or semi-established plant going into its second year of growth. So I hope you guys found this helpful and I do encourage you to experiment with stratification. It's fun to do a little bit of a science experiment. Maybe you'll start some without it and some with. I think I'm going to do that. I'll post kind of the results on Instagram unless you guys are interested in those results as well. I'll post them down here on this YouTube channel. Um, thank you guys for watching and I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye!